Welcome to what is definitely, at least in our area, a very rainy Sunday. At this point, I think we're counting the number of days that we've had sunshine in July. And we're appreciative of the rain because we were in drought conditions prior to this month. And now our rivers seem to be running a little higher than average, but we're still considered in a, in a sensitive area. And north of us is still drought condition, although south of us is now OK. And we'll mention more areas where we're, we're seeing a lot of climate things happen or weather things happen during the time of our prayers, but just to acknowledge that those who came out, came out through the rain, if, uh, if you're here physically. And it's also a really busy season for a lot of families that are having a chance to have reunions. So some folks are with us, some folks are in different places, some folks are um, with, with their families and celebrating with their families this weekend. So we're not seeing quite as many people as you might normally see, but we are glad for those who gather in summer. We begin every week at this time with centering music, which is provided by Alan. So if you will all gather yourselves to place your feet on the floor, Relax your bodies, maybe close your eyes. This is an invitation to arrive into this time and this place of worship. And so let us listen. Thank you, Alan, for that wonderful composition. Please gather now for the call to worship. You can find this either in your bulletin or you can find this on your screen. Meditations today come from the Gospel of John, and this theme for today deals with Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. Fear gripped the friends and the family of Lazarus. Admittedly, we fear death. We even grow anxious in times of change, as if our human experience is measured by small deaths and endings, even before we come to the threshold of mortal life. O oh, risen one, help us hear your words of hope and courage. Emmanuel, God with us, give us open hearts and spirits to receive your healing and reviving love. Renew us in our living and remake us in our loving and call us in your holy time home to your eternal love and everlasting life. Amen. We turn to the prayers of our community. We begin with prayers that we say out loud. Um, Wendy has our microphone, if we need it, to be shared among the congregation members. So 
we will start with any prayers that people want to say out loud using the microphone. And then we'll go to Zoom and share any prayers that people might have in Zoom. I do want to begin with a couple of prayer requests that have already been made this morning. We're starting with prayers of concern. We'll begin with ongoing prayers for the health and well being of members of our church and our community, such as Scamp, Huntley, Sasha's granddaughter, Mary. Sasha herself, Jan and Barry Brodel, Richard Himmelwright, and prayers also for his wonderful wife, Sandra, who is with us this morning. We've been asked to pray, especially today, and we'll make it part of our larger prayer for the nation of Zimbabwe, with which we are partnered. They are having a surge in COVID with the Delta variant and they are largely not vaccinated and are having some additional challenges so they have asked that we as a nation pray for their nation we pray for other parts of the world china which is flooding indonesia which is having mudslides and the fires that are happening out west at this time now let us lift up our own, our personal, and our communal prayers of concern beyond those that we have just named. Does anyone have a prayer request that you would like to make here in the sanctuary that is of concern to you? Meg has a prayer request, so let's go to Meg first. I'd like us to pray for people who are in transition, um, having finished one chapter of their life and looking for the next. Um, may God help them find their way. Thank you. That covers a lot of ground for a lot of people. May you hear yourself lifted up in these prayers that we share. Other prayers here in this congregation of concern. I am going to also name another concern that was raised and that is that we will pray with our sister faith community our lady of the mountains they're celebrating the arrival of their priest father josh who's a wonderful gift to the community however the catholic church in our area is now being greatly challenged by new allegations against the bishop in manchester and while the church as a whole seeks the truth, seeks healing, seeks accountability and resolution. People are hurting because the place that they turn to for trust and support has once again become a place filled with so much controversy. And so for our sisters and brothers in our own church, in our own valley, who struggle again with this renewed challenge, which is not, it is not isolated to the Catholic Church. These allegations happen across many professions, coaches, mentors, pastors, priests, in so many places where people work with the vulnerable. We, we pray for the healing and the hope that we can regain trust and continue to be people of faith who grow in our faith in times such as these. I turn to Zoom now for any prayers of concern. Arden, would you like to share a prayer? Well, I just wanted to say that my children um, are all coming now. Uh, Stephen and his uh, daughter and friend arrived yesterday um, by plane. Another one is coming in today by plane. <laughs> um, and. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm just hoping that travel is ordinary, <laughs> just, just getting from one place to the other safely. For safe and ordinary travel for those who are coming to these reopening parts of the wor world and, and celebrating being together again. 
and for Ray and Arden for the journey that they are continuing to take with their family and the great love they have for each other. Thank you. Other prayers inside Zoom. If you have a prayer, please do unmute and share it. I have one. Go ahead, Jennifer. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm frog in my throat this morning. Um, just good weather. Hope the rain stays away so we can dedicate one of my dog, my dad's benches for today. And then we're doing the other one August 7th. So um, just prayers that the rain stays away so we can get that done and dedicated. So for the opportunity for a family to have a ceremony of dedication in honor of a beloved one, may the weather cooperate, may the opportunity be possible. And for all those who are in the midst of making plans to say goodbye, especially many ceremonies have been delayed and so people are making plans belatedly. And so for these chances to actually create some resolution in the aftermath of loss, especially in a time of COVID, our prayers and our hearts are with both Sandy and Jennifer and their family today. Other prayers in Zoom of concern. Well, we know, especially on a rainy day, that's kind of cold for a July, we need joy and celebration and gratitude to balance out and lighten our capacity to walk through life and through the challenges that we are facing. And so a couple of notes of celebration. Uh, Donna, who is our treasurer, her, her son is up in Lake Placid competing in an Ironman competition. And she was tracking him this morning when we were meeting at eight o'clock and he had finished his swim, which was 2.4 miles. Then he has to bike 112 miles and then he has to run a marathon. So he's hoping to complete it in 13 hours. And Ray, the current timing was that he might finish around 8.30 tonight. So our prayers for somebody like Tim who has set this goal, he doesn't ever wanna do this again. He likes half Ironman marathon uh, competitions, but not the whole ones. But he's going to try to complete this one. May he complete it. May he be honored for his effort and his goal setting and his feistiness, regardless of the outcome. And we think also for all the athletes that are participating in the Olympics right now, even the Olympics is flopped fraught with tension. Tokyo is in lockdown. I mean, Japan's in lockdown because of COVID again, but the games are going on. And so for our athletes, um, with gratitude for their shining examples to us about how to create peace and persevere and be resilient, may we celebrate the best of what such games offer us. And we pray for Japan's well-being and those who attend and participate in, in public events such as this in the midst of such challenging times. And also for new babies that are coming. My niece, Stella Ray, we've been praying for my niece, Anna. Well, they, she delivered a healthy baby girl, Stella Ray. So yay. And uh, Tisha's niece is expecting a baby any time now in the hospital. So we have new life coming. Now I'd love to hear other prayers of gratitude or celebration. If anybody here in the congregation would like to share any such thing. <gasps> Yay, somebody's happy or great, grateful for something. Wendy, do you want to pass the microphone over? So Bob and Kit will share a prayer with us. For the last three weeks, we've had lots of family around. Um, my family was up, there were 20 of us. And then Bob's family has been around and they're at like 24 or something. So it's been wonderful um, to be able to hug again and to see people we haven't seen, and especially to have our own family together. Lovely for family reunions. Wendy, go for it. I had two lovely conversations with friends in here at church, Alan 
and Meg shared their trip adventures, and they <laughs> both had a wonderful time, and I love hearing stories like that. So for, um, for the wonderful respite and renewing opportunities, the vacations that come with summer, I should say gratitude for all the gardens that were opened to the Garden Club members last weekend. Um, those were lovely and special to share. How about just for the taste of something like a caprese salad, like fresh farm tomatoes and mozzarella. Oh, yay, the flavors of summer. It's so ha wonderful to be able to savor them when we can. Inzum, are there any prayers of celebration or gratitude that you would like to lift up? Please unmute if you do have any. Okay, total quiet. Like nobody in there is happy or grateful for anything? Somebody's got to be happy about something. Okay, uh, I'll say uh, uh, I'm grateful that Jen and I went to the symphony orchestra with Michael Bolton outside. Um, and it felt safe, even though we're, it was sold out and there were a lot of people there, but it was great. It was a very nice night. And I'm, I'm, I'm almost a little sorry to say it was um, nine o'clock at night and it was 84 degrees. So it was really nice. <laughs> I think you should be glad that you can say that. That's well, I know, but I feel guilty. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just send some our way, Sandy. That's okay. All <laughs> so for music that flows out into the night because we can have outdoor concerts, indoor concerts, we can have picnics, all these things, again, are wonderful. Please join me in prayer. Oh, holy God. May you hear us. May you hear our brothers and sisters in Zimbabwe who have asked us to lift them up in prayer and call your attention to places in the world, whether it is Japan or Nepal or Zimbabwe, where this pandemic is not over, as it is not over here where while we are experiencing hope, others are experiencing the closing of doors and the locking down of lives and the loss of life. We ask for vaccination, for hope, for good public policy and sustainable personal decisions to help nations and communities ride out this danger and come out the other side. And may we turn to such experiences as teachers and take from them, the lessons that will make us a better world, a better society, a better people of faith, because we have turned to each other and become love for each other. We lift up to you the individual lives that we have named, who represent for us the body of Christ, which is vulnerable, which experiences risk of death itself and we ask where it is possible that as in today's story you will reverse the walk towards death at least for a little while and keep those we love among us but where death is coming and where death is the kindness and the response that is most humane and dignified we ask that you will be the love that accompanies us across the threshold and welcomes us on the other side into a place where all healing has occurred. And we are welcomed into the wholeness that is the promise you give us. But in our time and in our place, we lift up Scamp. We lift up with gratitude Huntley, who came through open heart surgery this week in his home. We lift up Mary in her heart undergoing surgery and now recovery from that surgery. We lift up Sasha. We lift up the life of John. We lift up Richard. We lift up Nancy. We lift up Barry and Jan. We lift up Ray and Arden. We lift up so many people living with cancer in its various stages, either actively being treated 
in recovery or awaiting some type of an answer. We pray for those who are grieving, newly grieving or experiencing through others' losses, remembering their own loss too. We ask with joy for your attention on the new life that has come into this world, Stella Ray, and the new niece that's about to be born to Tish. We ask for your love for those who are experiencing and fleeing domestic violence this very week. Those who live with mental health, and for us, Kevin becomes that face, and we ask for his safety that the right resources will be made available to him as to all of us who struggle with things like depression, anxiety, suicidality, other types of mental health conditions. And we pray again for our brothers and sisters in all faith communities that have been challenged in so many ways. And we especially pray here in this valley for our brothers and sisters from Our Lady of Hope and other faith communities that are undergoing change and transition. And we ask that where transition has happened, where people have had the courage to lift themselves up and move themselves into a new part of their lives, that your love will accompany them and that the way will be made open to each of us wholly and sustainably to embrace and walk with joy into our lives. Hear us as we pray to you, and now we lift up our voices together in that prayer that you gave us that unifies us when we call out to you, when we speak out to you. Please unmute yourselves if you're in Zoom. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be, hallowed thy, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done, done. On, on earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day, give us this day, day our daily bread. Our daily bread. As we forgive those who sin against, against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the, 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 the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to confess that I think I skipped making announcements, so I'm going to just remind us of a couple of things. Next week is communion week, so be prepared for that. And we will also be having a social hour afterwards in person here in the church for anyone who happens to be on site. We're going to do that once a month for a while and give that a whirl. We are also planning to have two other special worship services in the month of August. On August 22nd, we will have a special speaker his name is Vince Skelton. He's been with us in the past. He lives with cerebral palsy, and he's just graduated with his master's in um, athletics and management, but he uh, has been a beneficiary of the assisted skiing programs in New Hampshire, and his graduation speech was about some of those experiences, and it was really inspiring so he has agreed to come and share a variation on that reflection with all of us. And it's a wonderful way to gain some perspective when we hear from somebody for whom every day is both an opportunity and a challenge and how he's compared that to how we've lived through COVID and come out the other side. So on August 22nd, we will have Vince as a special speaker and Weather permitting, God willing, we will have a community barbecue. So plan on coming and eating. I'm not sure exactly what the menu is going to be, but we're going to grill out right here on the campus. So everybody's welcome if you're, if you're anywhere within the region and you can get to us. Otherwise, you know, Ohio, Florida, you guys, Massachusetts, you might have to like have a hot dog with us sort of vicariously. And on August 29th, we will at our eight o'clock gathering will be the historic triangle service where we remember the founding of the church here in our village by reflecting on the original site where the first church in our village was erected. 
believe those are the announcements that I have for the life of the church at this time. Um, and if anybody's a piano fan, Sue Titus Reed is going to be playing in a concert up in Gorham at 6.30 on Wednesday. This is an advanced recital for Ellen Schwintz students, but it's a very advanced, so it's a concert. Um, it will be at the Opera House. I'm going to go. I'm just letting you know. I don't think it's closed to the public. I believe it's open. So if you want to go and cheer on Sue, it takes a lot of courage to um, perform for others when that's not your comfort zone. Now, Alan, I would love to hear your wonderful music as we sing our first hymn of the day, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. We are actually using hymnals in the sanctuary. This is another graduation moment out of COVID. Please turn to page 404 in your hymnal if you're here. Otherwise, the words will be up on the screen. And Alan will be playing the music, and you can follow along. We're going to do three verses, the first three. From our hymnals, this is, um, but we're doing it hybrid style, right? So everybody's still able to participate. Every time we do something new, we are take a new step towards what it means to be a combined community. It's always very interesting and exciting. And the congregation is still reminding themselves to stand up because I'm still forgetting to tell everybody that that's a great idea. Um, how many people knew that hymn? Do a thumbs up if you know it. Okay, I've got some hands in the sanctuary and some thumbs in the, okay. We're still trying to choose hymns, especially because we don't always have song leaders that most people can follow along with, regardless of whether there's a voice helping to lead you. We turn now to scripture. This is the story of the death and the rising of Lazarus. From the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 1 through 45. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, from the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. And it was her brother Lazarus who was ill. 
So the sister sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. After having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciple said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world, but those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep but I'm going there to wake him up. The disciple said to him, Lord, if he's fallen asleep, he'll be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about Lazarus' death, and they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his disciples, fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, but I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, they will live and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, Mary got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. And the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out, and they followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to Jesus and she saw him, she knelt at his feet and she said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her were also weeping. He was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there's a stench because he's been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you? that if you believed, you would see the glory of God. So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and he said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd, standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! 
The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. So ends the reading. Please pray with me. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. One of the most interesting things about Lazarus when you think of him as a saint is that he has not one tomb but two. All the commentators who think about this story point out to us that when Lazarus was brought back to life, it wasn't forever. He lived a human lifespan. And according to Orthodox and Catholic tradition, he went on in a different place to found and lead a church and to become a saint of the early church. And so he had a tomb a second tomb in another place. And apparently those relics of the saint are so revered that eventually the emperor Constantine decided the bones of Lazarus needed to be in the head of the entire empire in, in the capital. And so he had them moved, although to honor the original site, the original second tomb, he built a church for that town. And then eventually, in the way of wonderful, warring religious factions and political factions, the French sacked Constantinople and took the bones from Constantinople back for safekeeping somewhere in France where they have been lost to this day. Um, it almost leaves you speechless. But we focus back on the original story and the man who has two tombs. And I ask us to draw a comparison between what we have experienced in this year as a nation and as a world, an ongoing experience where people are at risk for their very lives because of COVID where those who have endured and actually made it through COVID have experienced other challenges. Mental health has become a huge issue for many, many people all around the world and certainly in our local community. Those who had remained stable up to a point are now experiencing fragility, are experiencing more crisis. And in the middle of everything that this pandemic has meant to all of us, people have endured personal challenges. Some of us have had loved ones who died when we couldn't get to them. Some of us have had to seek treatment and resilience in the middle of a pandemic that made every step of the journey through Alzheimer's or cancer or diabetes or mental health more challenging, where those who were holding vigil with others were more alone, had fewer supports. Many of us are only beginning to emerge from all the levels of isolation that were created by this experience. And although we have connected wonderfully and beautifully and made music together as a church and left the doors unlocked here and found ways through Zoom to grow and become a richer and more diverse community, nevertheless, there is a form of loneliness that is always and has been going on through much of this. It has revealed the vulnerabilities in our own lives and in our communities. And so in this time, as we begin to open our doors where it is possible, and again, we know 
parts of this world are locking down as opposed to opening up. It's a wave action that continues. The question becomes, will we permit these experiences for my family not so long ago, it feels. Cancer and then death became teachers and guides and changed the way we looked at and experienced the world. It wasn't a welcome teacher. Nobody asked me or my child if we wanted to be reshaped and transformed by these experiences. But here we are. And we were indeed shaped and changed by our encounter with mortality first by cancer and then by death itself. And this is the same type of challenge that all of us have been called to live through and experience together in the last year and a half, as well as in our personal lives. And we know because of the names that we've lifted up that there are so many people for whom life-limiting, life-threatening conditions are a reality right now. And when you live in that time and in that place, you are changed. You stop worrying about some of the little details and you start worrying about the big things, the most important things. You don't even have energy for anything that is not essential to being the human being you're capable of being in these times. Lazarus died. His sister didn't even want them to roll back the stone because it would stink. And there's plenty about what we've experienced that stinks. It's not okay that a child like Mary has a heart that may not carry her the way she wants into the life that would be as long as we would wish for her to have a life. It's not okay for cancer to come knocking on someone's door or Alzheimer's to change the identity and the cognition of one that you love. It is not okay that a pandemic is wreaking havoc with a world But what is okay is that love shows up in the middle of all of these places. And if it's late, let one of the lessons be that we don't have to fear death itself. Death does not have to be the enemy. Death is a threshold that we cross. Like being born, death is part of our human experience. And we have spent a long time being afraid of death not wanting to talk about it, not wanting to say the words. I did my entire master's thesis on the fear of having conversations about someone's mortality and how being afraid to be honest about what could be happening hurt us more than being willing to tell the truth. I counted out of all the daily blogs that I did for years, read by hundreds of people every day, I wrote about what it was like for Jesse to live with cancer and for our family to go through it. How many times did I talk about death once? I only talked about death once out of hundreds of blogs, and I only did it on the day she actually died. I used euphemisms, and mostly I used cheerful and optimistic language, and that wasn't wrong, but it was only part of the story everything around me, doctors, nurses, even spiritual leaders that I trusted couldn't quite bring up the conversation we needed to have. Jesus waited to come back and raise Lazarus. And his sisters and his friends and his community had to sit through his dying and his death. 
they actually had to go all the way into the loss before Christ called him out of it. And this is a foreshadowing of the journey that Christ himself would take. And it is part of what makes it okay for us to be human and to know that our lives are finite and the lives of those that we love are finite, but love is bigger and love endures because Christ himself went where we will go one day. Went there, went through it, came back to us to tell us, I will be here for you. There is more. There is love that waits for you. And there is love here in this world that will accompany you. And after that, then, then he called to his friend after he had wept and mourned Lazarus, who he loved. He asked for the stone to be rolled away. And he called Lazarus out of death itself back into a life so that someday Lazarus would be the leader of a faith community. And someday an emperor would think that Lazarus's bones were so important he would move them and the world would fight over the life of a saint. But only because he was called out of that first death by Christ. We are being called out of the caves of our lives, out of the dark places where we are isolated and lost and cut off from everything that gives us life back into that place where the voice and the hands of love are reaching for us. Sometimes we are the ones that are in the caves, struggling to hear the voice, struggling to have the capacity to be raised up and restored to life. But in this, we are not alone because we are being called by those who will love us and hold us. And sometimes we are the ones who are calling out, asking for someone to come back to us for as long as they can possibly be with us. And sometimes we are the ones begging and weeping for hope, for the one who loves us to be with us, and to simply hold us and bear witness because the answer will not always be that you will be called back from this threshold, but that you will be called across this threshold into the company of love, into the company of the saints who have gone before you, into the company of those who have walked and crossed over where you may yet go, where we all will go. But right now, in these days and times, we are a world trying to emerge from that cave. Some people with minds that are still hurting because of the anxiety and depression made worse by COVID. Some with diagnoses. Some with businesses that are fraught or in peril that will have to close. Some who have had to lift up their lives, uproot themselves, and move and relocate for the well-being of others or simply to begin again. One way or another, we are being called back into life for as long as possible. And we are also being asked to be the ones who reach for others who need to be reconnected to life where this is possible. God's love is not a promise that we won't die. God's love is a promise that God will walk with us through the days of our lives as short or as long as they may be. And will be the light that helps us shine light and bring light where it is needed and love where it is hope and healing and courage and honesty. Brothers and sisters, Christ said to the community of Lazarus, unbind him and let him go. And now that love says to each of us, 
be unbound from the things that hold you back from a full life and a whole life and a sustainable life. Be let go. Be set free. May love meet you where you are and breathe life into you for as long as possible and with love accompany you across the thresholds of your life. Thanks be to God. We ask for your support. We ask for your offerings and your ongoing commitment to this community. You can see whether you are in Zoom or sitting in this church or missing people who can't be in this church for so many different reasons. How we are indeed love for each other and that what you offer and what you commit and what you give goes to the places where it will make a difference in the lives of others. We give thanks for your faithful offerings. You can give through jxncc.org. You can place your offering in an envelope and put it in a plate or a basket here. Or you can mail it in, however you choose to give. We honor your commitment and we give thanks. That's a hard miracle to talk about. But let us not be afraid to go there. And let us find the joy of the life that is coming to us. If you're in the sanctuary, once again, please rise and turn to page 183 in the hymnal in the pew. Otherwise, you'll find the lyrics for the three verses of What Wondrous Love Is This on the screen. but I'm still curious. Thumbs up. Did anyone know this song? Okay. Okay. Maybe one person. How about in Zoom? Show me in Zoom again. Mm. Oh, I saw a lot of down thumbs. So I, I think we might know it, but we need the notes. We need to see it. Okay. Yeah, and the people in the sanctuary do have the notes. This remains one of our hybrid challenges is making sure we have music that people can follow and how to offer it in ways that you can follow it. So we will continue to listen to you and work together on these experiences. Brothers and sisters, let us raise up our voices in the benediction.
brothers and sisters, please do go in peace. Um, before we conclude, I also want to remind everybody, Poten will be visiting our valley for the next month. And so if anybody wishes to visit him, he's leading worship in Bartlett at the Bartlett Congregational Church every Sunday through to um, all of August and into early September. Um, this is done with our welcome and blessing. And so if you would like to hear his voice, we encourage you um, to, to welcome him and enjoy his presence while you can. Brothers and sisters, go in peace.